What's wrong? I just came from the station. You got a death threat? Yeah, it, it, why didn't you tell me? It was only one phone call. Uh, yeah, it was scary at first, but I think it was just a prank. I just, I didn't want to needlessly worry you. Oh, well, stop playing brave. That, that call really unnerved Katie. That's why Holden took her home last night. We're all really scared for her. <sighs> what did the caller say exactly? I don't know. It's in. We filed a report with Jack Snyder last yeah, night. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I want to forget about this. Honey, I know, but listen, we've got to find this guy. I don't. I'm not even positive that it is a guy. All right. Do you have any uh, recollection whether the voice sounded male or female or? The voice was a, a whisper. All right. Did it? Did was there a mechanical tone to the voice? What do you mean, like one of those filters? Or yeah. Something? Yeah. I don't know. Well, then, what did the caller say exactly? It's in the report. I just, I, I want to forget that this whole thing happened. I, I know you do, but listen, honey, sometimes things come back to you. You think you've mentioned everything, and you actually haven't, so would you please just try? Katie, we're not trying to make this harder on you. We want to keep you safe. I know, I know. It's just that when Jack was here, I told him everything that I could because it was fresh in my mind, and I, I don't know what I could add at this point. All right, all right, we'll try another approach. Holden, Jack gave me the list of personnel. I guess I want to talk to everyone. Okay, I'll arrange it. Did Jack tell you that there might be some connection? Between the picture of Molly and Chris, yeah, he did. Well, well, wait, you don't really think the same person is responsible, do you? Someone obsessed with Molly, jealous of her relationship with Chris, wants to bust them up, and now a rabid supporter of Molly wants you out of her anchor chair? Yeah, I do. You guys, it was just a prank. It's a coincidence. Well, that might very well be. But you're my sister, and I am not going to risk your life on any assumption, okay? How do you want to arrange this? Well, let's start with talking to the staff that was here last night. Okay, Henry was here when the call came in. All right, I'll talk to him first. Holden runs a pretty loose ship, so whoever's by the phone just tends to grab it. So this call came directly through the switchboard? Uh, maybe, or from anywhere inside the studio, from another extension. There's, there's no LED display on these phones, so there's no way to tell. Really? So who has access to Katie's schedule? Everybody. Um, there's a, well, there's a schedule posted up on the bulletin board by the reception desk. So anybody could see it? Sure, uh, people delivering food or packages, friends of the crew and the staff, you name it. You might want to change that. So, tell me what you know about this photograph of Molly that was found here in the studio. Just what I hear through the grapevine. Well, I thought Katie and you found the photo together. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Force of habit. I'm just spouting the company line. Holden wants us to be a little unspecific about the details. He doesn't want to fuel the rumors. You know, Henry has been such a lifesaver. Last night when I was completely coming apart, he called Holden and kept me calm. He's been a real pal. Well, that's good to know. Don't be so smug, okay? You are not off the hook. Well, why should I worry when I have little old you to protect me from your big bad cop sister? Don't ever underestimate Margot. She is so smart. I'm smarter. I mean it, Henry. She is already too close as it is. Connecting this with what happened with Molly? Mm. She's gonna figure out it's a hoax, and then she's gonna figure out that we are connected, and then we're done. Shh. No, no career, no, no nothing. All right. Henry will fix everything. 